Okay, so this is an analog LED matrix box. 25 red LED lights in a grid, 5 vertical switches, and 5 horizontal switches. Each row corresponds to a switch, and you need to turn on two switches in order to turn a light on and complete the circuit. It's kind of a fancy kid's toy, or a kid's STEM project, and that's what this video will be all about. So the reason why I'm building this is because I have a two-year-old kid and he is obsessed with lights and switches and that kind of stuff. So I thought, why not combine those two and make a toy that's a little bit more interesting than just, you know, a one-to-one -one ratio light to switch. Something a little bit more to figure out and play with. Now, this project really mimics the concept of a display. If you can imagine that you had something that could do the switching on and off really, really fast, then you could create any design. For now, I'm using actual switches. However, there are a lot of possibilities to expand this concept later on as he gets older by bypassing the switches and adding a microcontroller such as an Arduino to create patterns and do cool stuff. But for now, we're going analog. When you usually see LED matrices that are controlled by an Arduino, for example, not by switches, the lights are usually positioned much tighter together. But since I wanted to use switches here, I needed to space the lights out accordingly, and that made the whole grid larger. And I'm using some pretty chunky switches. They have a great feel, they're kind of retro-ish, and you can add this little rubber cover on them. So for the electronics, I'm using 5mm red LED lights, 25 of them. Now, the piece of plywood for the top is a quarter inch thick, and here I'm doing some tests to see what size hole would work nicely for these 5mm lights. I want them to fit rather snugly, not so large that the lights would just fall through, but not so small that the light wouldn't get caught at all and stay in place. Turns out 7 30 seconds of an inch was a good size for the bit and I also needed to figure out what size hole would be good for the switches and it turns out half an inch was good for that. So you have an LED light, it has a positive and a negative. And in this case, you're wiring it so that all the positives connect in one direction and all the negatives in another. Then you have a switch that connects with, the, with that whole line and a separate switch for the next line and so forth. And when you combine all those lines, you have a grid, a matrix. You can actually control a lot of lights with relatively few switches. Well, it actually gets exponentially larger. Let's say we have 2x, the amount of switches, and x squared, the amount of LEDs. Now, if I have two and two lights in a grid, I need four switches, and two square is four. So that's pretty low ratio. But let's say I have five rows in a grid, as in this case, so that's 10 switches, and five square is 25 lights. 
still seems reasonable. But what if I have like a hundred rows in the grid? Well, that means I have 200 switches and 100 square is 10,000. So now the ratio is 200 switches to 10,000 lights, which is pretty neat and a big number. So at this point, I got to work at laying out the LEDs and doing a whole bunch of soldering. And here I'm taking a piece of wire and cutting little sections of the, uh, the outdoor, the exterior material off. And that way I can solder on on those little sections uh, while still keeping it protected. And first up is soldering on the resistor for the row of lights and then moving on from there. And I soldered this together with all the positives being connected vertically and all the negatives being connected horizontally. So when I had the lid part, I made the remaining box. And for this I used half inch plywood. The only reason why I used eighth inch for the top was that any thicker and it was tricky getting the lights situated properly. It, it became too deep so you had to push them too far in and they wouldn't show quite right. Uh, but I think half inch was a little bit more substantial for the remaining box. I also cut out a little section here for the micro USB charger. And I also added little corners here so that the top would have somewhere to screw into because I wanted to have access to the box so I can change it eventually or, you know, replace a light if it goes out or anything like that. Then it was just a matter of gluing the lid piece on and putting everything inside the box again and connect the switches and the remaining electronics. And this is the way it's all put together. You have 5 volt power coming in, connected to the female micro USB. That goes into the charge controller, which connects to a LiPo battery, and the battery gets charged and won't ever get over discharged or overcharged. From the charge controller, the load comes in from the switches. So I have the horizontal switches controlling the negative for each light, so that connects to the negative power lid. And since I have the vertical switches controlling the positive for each light, that connects to the positive power lid. Then uh, everything is attached in the box with some hot glue and the back piece screws on. So it's nice to have access to it. And these lights, they don't use a whole lot of power, so you really don't have to charge this up very often. Now, my son has really enjoyed the box. I mean, sometimes he stays playing with it for like 30 minutes, which is a really long time in a two-year-old's world. So anyway, I'll make sure to link all the products that I used in the description below. And I'll also put a link to the SVG file uh, with the design of the lights and the switches if anyone wants to replicate the project. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.